Good Indians. That's a song that was counting dead Indians uh, back on the trails when they would kill Indians. See all these little kids in uniform, and we'd be wondering how come they're like that. We weren't dressed like that, but these little kids were. I remember being younger, growing up on the reservation, and being told, don't trust white people, don't listen to them. You never told why. The government schools are constantly being built and hospitals added. We bring them in, clean them up, and start them on their way to civilization. So I would ask social services and human services audience, how many people know about residential boarding schools? How many people here do? This never makes it into the history books. This is never talked about. Why did those schools get started, and who started them, and what was the rationale behind it? And the first general policy was the only good Indian was a dead Indian, that we needed to be killed, exterminated, eradicated. Um, once they realized that's a little bit more difficult to do is to have mass genocide of a population, the policies changed to, from killing to killing the Indian and saving the man. There's a General Pratt who was well famous and documented for using those words to kill the Indian and save the man and that we are subhuman and that our ways are savage and we need to be civilized. Well, in the governments in Canada and the United States followed that policy up until the, the 1980s in one form or another. There is a boarding school far, far away where we get mush and milk for three times a day. Oh, how the huskies run when they hear their dinner bell. Oh, how the huskies run three times a day. Like I say, I went to the mush hall when I was four years old. I was there for nine years. And uh, once in a while we'd come home on in summertime, but not all the time. When the counselors came and told my dad that he couldn't raise us properly, we were at the mush hole one week and our heads were full of bugs. Well, there was a lot of sad times, but I mean, like, I didn't get, like, angry and have any resentment until after I got out. Because I didn't know, like, uh, from just from five and a half to 16, they would just thought it was just like a normal upbringing. Like, they not have no parents and stuff like that. Right. So that's the... Uh, and after I got out, and then they thought, well, this is the way they were supposed to be uh, treating us. I think my mother couldn't take care of us because uh, our father was uh, into alcohol. Me and my sister, we started there in 1945. I was five years old at the time. And we had all our hair cut off. We were made baldies. We were really bald. And uh, that wasn't a very good feeling to have. And uh, they used to call us uh, uh, mushroom baldies. That's what they used to, the kids on the reserve used to call us. Oh, we can go in now. I mean, this is going to take like all day, eh? <laughs> Dude. We were taken to the hospital to get checked out for uh, nits and whatever, I guess that was, and, you know. Uh, well, they checked us out, you know. Then, you know then, then they split us. The, the school was split in age group and by the boys and girls. Boys were on one side, the girls were on one side. And they went from the lower age up to uh, high school level. My ma was going to walk out here and go out this door. And, uh, and at five and a half, I, uh, my sister tells me that I grabbed my mom's leg. And uh, you know, of course, we were all just crying. We were, the whole four of us were just crying. Like, you know, because uh, my mom was going to leave us here. So I, I grabbed my mom's leg and, uh, well, crying and that. and. Uh, uh, just kind of like uh, hollering, like, Ma, don't leave me, don't leave me, like, you know. So, but anyway, like, uh, while that was going on, like, the supervisor came over and just kind of grabbed me and took me off my Ma's leg, and, uh, and then my Ma just walked out, and I never seen her uh, for those ten, ten years that I was here. She never come to see me once. I don't know why. He took my brother away to where he was supposed to stay. And my sister, she just went on her own. I was with 
most of the four, year, four and five year olds. We didn't go to school because we were too young. Yet, through the agencies of the government, they are being rapidly brought from their state of comparative savagery and barbarism to one of civilization. When we used our language, we, at that young age too, you know, we were just learning. So uh, they used to wash our mouth out with soap. They would take the whole bunch of us and march us to the uh, shower, coal shower, and they'd throw us in there and beat us along the way. And that was a routine thing, I guess, I don't know. But that, uh, ta that taught us, you know. They'd throw us in this dark press room where they kept all our Sunday go-to-meeting clothes. And uh, they'd throw Rosemary and I in there and uh, tell us the rats were going to get us. But uh, I didn't know then why I was being thrown in there. And I used to wonder, what did I do? And uh, I would cry, and Rosemary would cry, and we cried and cried for hours in there, not knowing why we were in there. And uh, they'd take us out. And when I did get to learn a little bit of English, I knew then they were throwing us in there because we wouldn't speak English. And uh, I must have been stubborn right from the day I was born because I thought to myself, I'll never speak English either. You want me to speak English? I won't speak English. So I didn't speak at all for two whole years because I figured if I spoke Indian, I could lick him. And uh, if I spoke English, then it would be against everything that I stood for. And so I didn't speak at all. But today, they all speak English and some have taken business courses, home economics, and other higher training. Took us into another room down there, and maybe down in the playroom. We took all our clothes off, and we put the, uh, the clothes of the school on. Yeah, and they give us a number. So my number was like 48, and my brother was uh, 36. My family was the state-run institute, and the nickname for the Thomas Indian School is Salem. And Salem was derived from asylum, and you know what an asylum is, it's for crazy people. So we were thought of as being crazy, I guess. They were just considered bad people, bad children, but they weren't bad children, okay? They were placed there for, for so many different reasons, but not because of any kind of delinquency um, on their part. 